Bibles to Matthew chapter 25, please. And we're going to pick it up in verse 14. And for the kingdom of heaven is a, as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability. And straightway took his journey. And keep that in mind that each one of these men that were given talents were given a measure according to their ability. Some were given a measure of five, some were given a measure of one. Uh, the measure was based on what they had capability of doing. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. Now likewise he that received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them, as the Lord said unto him. Well done, good and faithful servant, thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strode. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. And he gave the talent back to his Lord. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strove. And 27, Thou oughtest therefore to put my money to the exchangers, and then my coming I should have received my home with interest or usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So the question is, what does Jesus expect from us when we read these verses? Is there an expectation that we are to do something? Are we given something from the Lord? Are we given talents? Are we given ability? You know, in those days, talent uh, was, was one of the largest measures of money. So these, these men were given a very large measure of money to go and um, do something. Do something with it. But I, no greater gift can someone give than our life. Or their life for us. And Jesus gave his life for us that we could live. And we could live for Him. That, that is a tremendous gift. Now that we have received that gift, what are we to do with it? What are we to return? Is there, can we possibly make a return? Can we pay Him back? Well, I don't think we can ever pay Jesus back for what He's done. But I think we can make an effort. I think we can try to do something for Him. So if He gives us a measure of five talents, we should try and return unto Him five more. 
Let us be careful because if he gives the measure of only two talents, let's try and get a return on those two. And if he gives us a measure of one talent, let us try and get him a return on one. Otherwise, we would have to dig into the ground and put that talent in a hidden place, uh, hoping to keep it for the day of his return. But if we look at inflation, just not putting it into work, it devalues. Money tomorrow will be less than money is today. You know, a talent 2,000 years ago today would be worth a fortune. Already a talent was worth many, 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 many weeks of work in those days. What does Jesus expect from us? Let's turn to Luke 13 and pick it up in verse 6. He spake also this parable, a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon, and found none. Then he said unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years now I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and found none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it in the ground? And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well. And if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. So we've had opportunity already to bear fruit. We've had opportunity to do something for the Lord, to do something more than simply get up in the morning, go to work, come home at night, prepare dinner, go to sleep, get up in the morning, go to work, come home at night, prepare dinner. And so it goes. And so the days waste away. We can do more. Because in, in doing the things of this world, who are we bearing fruit for? Only for the flesh. We're only producing for the flesh. In John 15, 1, Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husband. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So, Jesus is the vine, and we are the branches of that vine. Simple stuff. And the branches, what is the purpose of the branch? The purpose of the branch is to bear fruit, to produce something. What does it mean to bear fruit in the gospel? Does it not mean to labor in the gospel? Does it not mean to witness? Does it not mean to proclaim God's word, to hold his word up? How much of our time can we dedicate to this? If he requires a tenth of our income, does he require a tenth of our time? Do we give the Lord that which is his due? In Israel, it was required that they would bring the, the first of the sheep, the newborn sheep. And it was to be lame without blemish. It was to be the best they had. This was their labor. This was their work. When they were to bring harvest in, they were to bring it unto the Lord, the best part. And so it should be today that we bring the first and the best of what we have to the Lord.